Wall Street veteran Bernard Madoff has been arrested and charged with running a $50 billion Ponzi scheme. Congress wants to know what caused the Enron meltdown. Now, well, the collective rage currently is focused on Wilcom. Tyco CEO Dennis Kozlowski was convicted of looting hundreds of millions of dollars. This yeah. is one of the biggest fraud cases ever. Their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. Find out more on this week's episode of White Collars, Red Hands. Not many people are very interested in local politics. In the U.S., 67% of eligible voters cast their ballot in the 2020 presidential election, which means that even fewer people than that show up to vote for the new mayor, alderman, circuit judge, or tax collector. Many of you, like myself, might have thought that these positions are a drop in the bucket and surely can't carry much power of influence or change. But today's story might make you start to think differently. Joel Greenberg was the elected tax collector in Seminole County, Florida, which holds just under half a million people. Even though Joel had a shady past and no experience, the residents and local office holders didn't bat an eye. Tax collector is a pretty light position. All you need to do is, yes, collect taxes and oversee the driver's license renewal program for some reason. Everyone underestimated just what Joel was capable of. As soon as he entered office, he began running the place like a crime ring and blatantly doing whatever he wanted. His actions would land him in prison and start a domino effect that led directly to the nation's capital. So let's start knocking down dominoes on this week's episode of White Collars, Red Hands. I love Domino's pizza. That's such a bad take, Taste Tastes a little bit like cardboard, but I like it. Okay, so here's the thing. They redid their crust a couple years ago. And by a couple, I probably mean like 10 years ago now. I used to hate it since then. It's palatable, but I would never choose it above anything else. No, I would never go out to buy it. But if it's there, I'll eat it. I guess. I'm not going to be happy about it, though. I'd rather eat Little Caesars, and that's not a lie. Really? Yep. Little Caesars cheesy bread is good. I'm just saying. I got a Little Caesars stuffed crust pizza the other day Mm -hmm. with crazy bread, and it was 12 bucks. All right? You can't beat that. You can't. It's such a deal. And you know what else you can't beat? This podcast. A great podcast episode, which we're serving up hot and ready for Hell you. Hell yeah. We ate. Podcast, podcast. We're about to eat. Yum, yum. Serve. Slay. Serve. Slay. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Serving nothing but but this podcast OC directly to your ears. <laughs> podcast OC. Have I gone too far? Pod OC. <sighs> Podussy. Well, Podussy could... Yeah. Serving you Pudusi. Serving you a hot slice of Pudusi this week. Yes. And, and what flavor is it? It's Joel Greenberg flavor. <laughs> it tastes... Mm. Introduce yourself. This tastes like tax collector. My name's Kashan. And I'm Nina. And we're back with another episode. This time, Joel Greenberg. This story uh, is insane. <laughs> and we covered a lot of crazy... We covered a lot of crazy stories. This, this one's... Up there, I think. Hell yeah. So, why why don't we just get on in? Uh, Joel was born on Valentine's Day, 1984. Hey, we did not even plan that. No, that means, so when you're listening to this, his birthday was a couple days ago, but we're recording the day before his birthday. Happy birthday, Joel. Yeah, happy birthday, Joel. Hope prison is going exactly as it should. Uh, But he was born in 1984. Uh, into a family of prominent dentists in El Monte Springs, Florida. The Greenberg family owned, ran, and operated over 90 dental clinics throughout the entire state. And many of his family members went into the family business in one way or another. But Joel was always the black sheep of the family. He was a troubled kid from the beginning, diagnosed with ADD and Tourette's. Black sheep! He was just disabled! Ooh, yeah, yeah he, he has struggled with mental issues yeah. in a multitude of ways. Uh, and this caused him to struggle academically and behaviorally. And at one point, he was enrolled in a program for wayward boys hosted by a basketball player for the Orlando Magic. 
Okay. And a newspaper article was released on the program, and it actually featured Joel uh, <laughs> in an interview where his mom went on record saying that he was her golden star that just needed a bit of polishing. What a nice way to word that. <laughs> Thanks, Ma. Wow. How poetic. Oh, yeah. He's a... he's a he's, Good job, Miss Greenberg. He's a piece of shit, but... Uh, Love him. You can, you can clean him up. We hope. Clean him up. Yeah. So, uh, after this, Joel still struggled, so his parents decided to send him to military school. That'll work. Like something literally out of a teen movie. Uh, they sent him to the Florida Air Academy, and he stayed... Mostly in line, or at least enough to graduate high school. Well, you know, you have to stay in line in the military or they'll beat you. That's true. I, yeah, I've seen Full Metal Jacket. Oh, I, yeah. I know that you can put soap and socks. Oh, yeah, and beat the shit out of people. And, and, and hit someone with it. Yeah. That's all I know from the military is Full Metal Jacket. Uh, I think it's a pretty accurate depiction. I think every war is Vietnam. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Who's the real winner? Who's the real loser? Were there you know? other wars? I don't think so. That one's not think- even done. Vietnam? Well, yeah. never technically finished. That's what I'm saying. It's still the Vietnam War. Yeah. On paper, which is all that matters. Yeah. Um, Viet at- Cong is alive and well. All right. <laughs> I don't actually know. Uh, after dropping out, he had an interesting career pivot as he became a local radio DJ. Well, after that, you would have a pretty... Uh, after all that, you would become a pretty interesting person. And I would like to think a fun, funny person. Oh, but no. I don't think that's actually what happened. No, the radio DJ would be like on track with a with a person shaped and molded by such an interesting childhood. Well, it gets worse though too. Great. I, he wrote a few sports articles for the premier paper in Orlando, the Orlando Sentinel, which opened up the opportunity to host the eponymously titled Joel Greenberg Show. It's part of the Yahoo Sports Radio in Orlando, which broadcast on AM. So that's how popular it was. It was on AM. I did also find later that that it was on an FM channel, so I guess that's fine. But he was a sports radio DJ. What's wrong with that? He hosted a sports show. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's more like talk radio. You don't have to have a whole lot of personality. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't even know Just if he was spitting really good facts. with sports. Yeah. I mean, you still have to be interesting. Like, I listen to a lot of, like, sports content, but... Uh, I don't. Every Anyone can do it. Yeah, true. Almost. So, it is what it is. And with all of the confidence that comes with being a niche micro-celebrity in certain sports fan circles in Orlando, Joel had the confidence to finally let his adult behavioral problems that he had developed show... He invited a co-host onto the show, a recent high school graduate named Nicole. This is not going to go well. Who he randomly reached out to on Facebook. No, got worse. Asking if she wanted to join him on the show, which is uh, weird because he was in his late 20s. And what, just like looking for 17-year-olds on the internet to join his show? But she'll like be 18 in May. This is literally like the start of a To Catch a Predator episode. It is. But it's like, fine, bro. You know, like, she's the age of consent and she'll be 18 in May. She also kept saying she was like 17 or 18. And I was like, you don't remember? Because that is kind of a big distinction. So I think that maybe for the documentary, I think she might have been 18. In the documentary, they were like, say you might have been 17. Barely legal, baby. Either way, it's still weird as fuck that you're reaching oh, out absolutely. to people and being like, hey, I saw you on Facebook. You want to hop on my... Uh, well, what's weird about it is is my that... radio show? Okay, so I will say... What's different... So I've had people do stuff like that in my career. When you were 18? No, that was the difference. I wasn't 18, and it was very public that I do comedy. Um... She's an Instagram model now, if that counts. But not at the time. No. But at the, this, what's weird about this is she has absolutely no sports background, and she's barely legal. Or maybe not even legal. She might have, like, played sports in high school, but yeah. It's no, like, hey, right. I saw you were on the volleyball team. Uh, JV? I think you'd make a great fit on the Joel Greenberg show. Hell yeah. Um, and as she had literally just started college, she naively agreed to do the show with him. And he immediately started being hella weird. Yeah. He would refuse to sign her paychecks from anywhere but his 
house, like his personal house. So she would have to go to his house alone on Fridays to get paid, where he would like constantly ask her if she wanted to come in and stay. He would also make her sit on his lap in the recording studio, grope and touch her inappropriately, and invite her out to drinks, although she was only 18. So l- Made her sit on his lap while they recorded. First of all, sound quality wouldn't be terrible. I guess it was in the breaks, is what mm. she said. She was like, in the breaks, he'd be like, I'll oh, sit on my lap. Yeah, it's gross. That's weird. Yeah. Well, luckily, she left the show not long after starting because of all of these issues. And I guess the show also ended pretty quickly. There, Shocking. There is a there's an article that was released uh, when all of this first dropped from someone in the area who said that they had known his show and that it had only lasted like three weeks because it was like at six a.m. and Joel couldn't wake up. To, uh, Joel couldn't wake up on time to do it. That's funny. <laughs> um. So yeah. Joel then went on to open an advertising agency, DG3 Media Group, that actually had some success. Uh, He sold it in 2015 for a profit, and he opened up multiple other companies around this one that he kept, uh, but moved them to being inactive. But that will become important later on in the story. In 2016, he decided to once again shake up his entire life by running for the Seminole County tax collector position. And that was truly the beginning of the end for Joel Greenberg. This man had a real lack of direction, I feel like. Like, he really just didn't know what he wanted to do. I think I think what he knew he wanted to do was not be a dentist. <laughs> he was like, well, he succeeded my family then. does dentist. Yeah, he would never have been able to be a dentist. He could have been maybe a hygienist. Who knows? But why did he want to be a tax collector? Why a public office at all? Joel Greenberg did not seem interested in politics up to this point in his life. So his campaign came as like a shock to even those who knew him best. They were like, what's going on? I think he was an impulsive person. Clearly. Uh, Well, I mean, you said he's got ADD. Fair. Like. But I know a lot of people with ADD that don't randomly run for County not, tax collector. No, not for office, but like it explains some of these impulsive decisions that he makes. I mean, I get it. I can't finish a task yeah. without doing three other tasks all in yeah. parallel and jumping between them. But never once have I been like, you know what? <laughs> I, I'm just going to be a radio DJ today. That's what I'm going to do. My whole life is different now. Um, the, the tax collector office is really quite a small position even in the landscape of local government uh their job as i mentioned before is to collect taxes and issue driver's licenses hunting licenses and conceal carry permits in the state i don't know why, why is that the tax collector doing that oh who knows i think it's because like they take payment from people so like issuing licenses is just another like governmental transaction so i guess it kind of makes sense if you're like where do we put this tax collector but But that's all they do. And he ran on a platform of attacking the previous tax collector, Ray Valdez, who was running for an eighth term in the position. Uh, Supposedly, Valdez had purchased buildings that went into auction after their their owners failed to pay their taxes. Oh, that's sketchy. Which it's not, yeah, it's not explicitly illegal. uh, But yeah, it could be seen as obviously shady. Or mm-hmm. illegal adjacent, you know, something's weird about it. Um, and with these accusations and the fact that Greenberg backed his campaign with a hundred thousand dollars, which seems insanely high for such an election, I feel like most of these elections I feel are like not that, funded. I feel like that was a waste of a hundred grand. I don't know. I think you got a pretty well, besides all the jail stuff, I think you're gonna find out he got a pretty good ROI on it. But uh uh with all that money behind him though. It's no surprise that Joel did wrest the position from Valdez with 52% of the vote and was inaugurated into office in January of 2017. He made the entire vibe of the office immediately like a boys' locker room, though, constantly commenting on the women that worked there, uh, talking openly to his employees about it, uh, which is an immediate red flag for me anywhere I go. Uh, I've definitely been to jobs before where some of the people there 
within like a like two weeks of me being there, will be like, oh, she's so hot, isn't she? And I'm like, don't say that. That's gross. Yeah, it sounds like the service industry. I'm like, yeah, but I like other jobs I've had too. Really? Where I'm like, ew, what the fuck? Don't yeah, say that. Weird. It's like, I come here to work. But I guess that's what happens when you're 35 and single. Hey, ever, now. When you're at work, you're just, everyone's like, just hot, right? Please, someone date me. <laughs> But uh, whatever. Uh, I don't think that's funny because uh, I'm 31 and single. Four more years, that'll be me. Can't can't wait till you're commenting on women in the office. Uh, oh, I already do. What? There's some hot teachers at my school. Stop. Oh, my God, stop. <laughs> he also started introducing some pretty off-the-wall ideas into the tax collector's office. All right. Like allowing employees to... Openly carry firearms. What? While in the building. Uh, yeah. He was like, "Yep, everyone can open carry." Oh uh, well, here. this is Florida, so. Yeah, they uh, they hired uh, hired they elected Ron DeSantis. So yeah, so yes. Um, he also hired these people he called a deputy tax collectors. Uh, giving them badges and everything, and they were used as like a security force for the tax collector, and they were now allowed to also just be strapped at all times. Just freaking so he, he can create the budget, and he was like, "Yep, throw some security guards in there, and we're gonna give them body armor and and weapons." Love that. And I guess that's something you can just kind of do. Which is not great. Um, and he gave them badges, which is also weird. <laughs> Greenberg himself also openly carried a handgun and wore a badge. Well, of course. Which the tax collector, like, did not wear a badge before this. It was weird that he was like, no, I'm I want... I'm the tax collector. He was like, no, I want a fucking badge. That's funny. People need to know when I'm they walking around. They have to know. That the tax collector just entered the fucking room. With Make my, sure they're charging that tax. With my entourage, all right? You expect me to collect these taxes. Uh, he literally turned the tax collector's office immediately into, like, an unlicensed police force. And, of course, all of this budget comes directly from the taxpayers. Well, I'm not going to lie. You know, if my taxes are going to go to something, I want them going to something like this. Might you know? as well be a something tax militia. Keep, <laughs> keep the people safe. Keep our money safe, Kashan. This is the type of this is the type of things I want my tax money going towards. Feed like here's the deal. My money could be going towards education yeah, fuck and it shit. could be going to school lunches, but maybe yeah. those kids like could fucking learn how to grow a garden, then I wouldn't have to supply them with food. You know what I mean? So really, this makes more sense. Teach a, teach a kid to garden. And he'll never be hungry a day in his life. And that, then how the fuck, are, and then how are they going to pay taxes? Think about that. Farmers pay taxes. Uh, Yeah, in money. But if kids just grow tomatoes, what are they going to do? Eat the tomatoes. Dirty. I don't know. I don't know. Make ketchup, you idiot. All right, fair, fair. You got me. See, that conversation is is just as intelligent as something Joel Greenberg would have. <laughs> <laughs> because of this, it should only come as a little bit of surprise to you that he was actually accused of impersonating a police officer. Who? At one point. Joel Greenberg? He really wanted a badge. I don't know. Uh, he followed a woman in his car, and when the lady pulled over, he got out of his car wearing a backwards baseball cap. And cargo shorts, and then went on to flash his tax collector badge uh, that he wore, and berated the lady for speeding. What the fuck? That's insane behavior. Yes, it is. Uh, but the police went on to say that he had broken no laws since he never actually said he was a police officer. But he pulled her over. Did he have wee woo lights? No, he just followed her, and then and then like he kept following her. So she pulled over, and he got out, and was like. He ba it was basically road rage, but he had a badge, so she was like, I "Road rage." For the badge. So she was like, "I think this guy just impersonated a police officer with me." Weird. Hi, I'm Joel Greenberg, and I am the deputy tax collector. And you're going way too fucking fast. Do well, you have any idea how fast you're going? And he had a gun too, right? Like he open carries all the time, so he's always got a pistol on his hip. What's so this guy look like? I must know. He kind of looks like uh, an average white guy. 
He looks like your average white guy who's a chiropractor in a small town. I think is an apt description, actually. Yeah. Oh, God, he's married with children. Yeah, yes, he is. Two of them. Which, by the way, he got married, like, right before he got elected. So all this is going on is he's, like, having two children. So keep that in mind. It's really weird. Um, and what's even more hypocritical of him is that later he was then pulled over by the real police <laughs> for speeding and was caught on their body cams trying to pull leverage of his position to get out of the ticket. He's like, you're really going to pull the tax collector over? <laughs> so I was like, hey, I don't know if you know who I am, but I'm the tax collector in this town. They're probably like, we have one of those? If so, I didn't know this was a position before doing this. So if someone told me I'm the county tax collector, I'd be like... You don't know about tax collectors? Like, okay. But like an elected position? I didn't think it was elected. I figured they would just be appointed or some shit. I don't know. Uh, I guess I didn't realize that they were voted in. Yeah, I don't think I've ever voted for one. I don't know. I don't think I've ever voted for one. That might just be how it is in Florida. Whatever. I don't know. But I would literally be like, okay... Yeah. I have a job, too. Who cares? <laughs> you do a job. I do a job. job. We all both have jobs. Yeah, I, both of us aren't unemployed. Great, Joel. Uh, Greenberg caught attention from other people in government immediately about his spending habits uh, as the county tax collector. It costs quite a bit of money to bring on the new security force. And he also created new executive positions for the tax collector's office. Uh, within the budget that he released, uh, which was $11 million for 2018, which, honestly, I don't know if that's a lot or not a lot. It seemed that the people who were in the know at the meeting said that was a lot. The One of the executive positions he added had, like, a salary of, like, 96 grand. So... I want to work for him. He only hired his friends. And he'd probably make you sit on his lap in between I would sit on meetings. his lap. I would sit on his lap for $96,000. Okay. Well, it's good to know how much your dignity costs. And it's probably less than that. I was going to say, less than that. <laughs> it's probably less than that, but that's fine. Um, the Seminole County Board of Commissioners uh, grilled Greenberg about his budget at a meeting where he argued with them in an increasingly heated manner. He, I, I think it didn't get too crazy, but I think at one point he's like, he's like, you're just full of crap. <laughs> and I was like, now listen uh, here, buckaroo. Yeah, and it, it, it's funny. One of the documentaries I watched, they really tried to sell that. It's like, because then everyone was like, uh, uh, calm down, sir. Do not speak like that. You're really chapping my oh, ass. Oh, what a load of crap. Okay. Uh, but they actually had no constitutional power to overturn the budget. So it still ended up passing. Like the state level has to deny a budget. And I guess the state passed it because mm. they didn't really look. They don't care. They'd rather just pass it as long as it's not egregious, I guess. Um. Joel didn't forget the slight, however, as shortly after this, he contacted the cybersecurity guy on his team about how to create ransomware. For those of you who don't know, ransomware is a virus that scammers use to encrypt files on a computer. Oh. And then they ask you for money, usually in the form of cryptocurrency, to give you a password to unlock all of your encrypted files. Hmm. So they take your computer hostage and hold it for ransom. Well, it turns out that Greenberg had called this guy into his office because he wanted to launch a ransomware attack on the government servers. What? That he could access, and he wanted to ask for anywhere between half a million to a million dollars to unlock the data. Just doesn't seem like enough to me. <laughs> you think he should pump those numbers up? If he's got the government's info, yeah. This is such... This is so illegal. Well, correct. And he called this guy in to be like, hey... You want to help me do this, like, insanely illegal thing? He's like, no. Uh, he told the cybersecurity expert that he would uh, provide him a healthy share if he helped. But the guy actually said no and quit his job and went immediately to the authorities. So great for that guy. He did the right thing. Uh, the only problem is they didn't decide to pursue charges. What? Because it would kind of come down to just the cybersecurity guys were yeah. versus Joel's. So they were like, uh, we can't make a case. Yeah, okay. Unless he actually followed through with it, but he didn't know how the fuck, how, how the right. fuck to do that. So if a cybersecurity guy quit... He's, there's no way he could yeah, do that. Absolutely not. Uh, so that attack never materialized. But that doesn't mean that Joel was keeping his nose clean. He found himself in hot water once again when one of his employees came into work 
to find their driver's license issuing office in disarray with a box of old licenses labeled for destruction turned over and licenses scattered all over the desk. Upon viewing the security footage, they found that Joel and another man had entered the branch at 2 a.m. and rummaged through the licenses and desks before leaving them in disarray. Why would you leave them a mess? He's an idiot? Yeah. Uh, when the employee emailed Joel about it, he admitted to being there, but claimed he was showing his friend Matt Gates around their operation. Oh, sorry, guys. I was just like making a mess with my friend. <laughs> Do you know who Matt Gates is, Nina? Uh, that sounds familiar. So Matt Gates is the uh, alt right congressman that just uh, oh, like you got the you got the yeah. speaker of the house removed. Yes, this last time. Um, I forget what they call that group of like really far right people in Congress. It's like him, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, Lauren Boebert. I think yeah. is the other person's name. Um, but for those of you who don't know, Matt Gates like I mentioned, is a congressman from Florida that was pretty chummy with Joel at the time. They had been known to attend parties together, uh, which is supported with pictures, and they both had hitched their political movements to the Trump presidency. Joel Greenberg actually spoke at a Trump rally in Florida at one time. So they're both kind of, they run in the same circles. Yes. So obviously it is still pretty weird that he and a congressman showed up at the witching hour to mm. look through discarded driver's licenses. And as it turns out, the real reason behind it might be more insidious than you were even thinking. I don't even have an, a, like, I, I don't even know what my guess would be. Well, it's awful. Okay. The answer. Um, now is probably a good time to mention uh, that Joel Greenberg was addicted to paying women to have sex with him. Hey, good for those girls. Hey, which, hey, if you want to get your freak on and both parties are of sound mind and consenting, I kind of don't really care what sort of transactions have gone down between them. But Joel was not simply paying for sex, but committing multiple other crimes along with it. He went on to a website that matched sugar daddies with sugar babies, which wasn't explicitly named in any of the court documents. But after what we learned about Cody Wilson on the Hall of Shame episode, I'm really betting it was sugardaddy.com. Or it was seeking arrangements. Mm, kind of weird you just knew that. It was here that over the course of two years, Joel Greenberg would pay $70,000 for what is referred to multiple times in the court documents as Commercial sex acts, which is... Hey, have you ever been fucked from behind? Well, try it now with Ram Daddy. I don't know. I'm thinking of a commercial. <laughs> That's commercial, like sex act commercial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The commercial sex acts. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's good. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Joel is also an idiot because he paid for a lot of these tran transactions with his personal Venmo account. Oh, dude, dude, that's a rookie mistake. You got to do cash. You're the tax collector. You should have cash. You got Venmo. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, labeling the transactions usually with tags like uh, food. Or ice cream. Or just a fish emoji. They were hundreds of dollars. It'd be, it's, it's expensive ice cream. It would be like $300. It would say like salad. <laughs> have you ever been to Sweet Green? Not $300 worth of it. And actually, no, I have not. Me neither. <laughs> I know it's expensive. You don't fucking go to Sweet Green. Are you kidding me? For a salad? I'm not going out for a salad. I can go get a bag of lettuce for what? I eat a salad for dinner and I'm starving. Sounds like it. I'm going to eat some M&Ms when I get home. <laughs> That's not more. Uh, and your Venmo history is usually open to like your entire friends list. So they could definitely see this. Yeah. And that's why I they can't see the amounts though. Yeah, they can. I can see friends amounts on Venmo. Really? Yeah. I think maybe it's something you can toggle. I don't know. But I that, gotta look at that. That's why I only use tags like back alley slop job and crimes against humanity on mine. So one of my most embarrassing moments was I was nannying for this family and she was paying me through Venmo and I had paid someone to get me a curtain rod, which is true. I, he bought me a curtain rod. And so I get a text from the mom and she's like, Hey, your Venmo history is like, 
public. Um, even though I think it's funny, other people might not think it's funny. And like, I was putting things like WAP, like, you know, and then the whole curtain rod, I was like, curtain rod to shove up my ass. <laughs> and my boss saw it. I think that's hilarious. I thought it was funny. Look up my Venmo. Those two things are actually from my Venmo. Oh, I believe that. Okay. It's a joke. If I put cocaine on there, it's not because I bought cocaine, all right? It's, Except for that one time I bought cocaine. Yeah. Uh, what? Whenever I give... Uh, actually, whenever I buy cocaine, it's just a pizza emoji. Oh, my God. Well, now this is public. Now people know. So, you know, whatever. We're having fun. Uh, at least mine wasn't going to underage girls like Joel Greenberg's on top of that. They were underage. Give me a second. Okay. I'm sorry. I said it before, but give me a second to reveal it. Okay. On top of that, he also made payments to them using an American express credit card that he opened on the, beh on behalf of the tax collector's office. So the people were paying for this. So the, yes. <gasps> and now worse than this, he also solicited sex from a 17 year old minor on multiple occasions and introduced this minor to other men. No! Who then also solicited her for sex. Joel also claims that he did not know that she was under 18, just like Cody Wilson. Uh, but it later came out that he had also illegally been using the Florida driver's license database known as David to look up the minor's information. So he definitely knew at that point oh my that she at least God. had been underage during part of the time that he was yeah. soliciting her oh my God. for sex. And trafficking her to other people. Oh my god! I told you it was that got I told worse. Going to get bad. It's one thing if you fuck a seventeen-year-old; that's bad enough. To then peruse her to your other friends. Peruse? I don't. I didn't know what the <laughs> word was. Show her off like cattle. My God, gross. Uh, his David search history uh, revealed that he had also used it uh, to search multiple other sugar babies uh, that he had met and people he knew for personal reasons. Um, he also used the system and a badge pressing machine that he had bought with taxpayer funds to create fake IDs for himself and the sugar babies he had with other people's real information. Uh, I'm assuming he did this for the girl's so that he could take underage women into bars. I don't know that for sure, but that's kind of what I would assume. Why he did it for himself, though, I have no idea. Well, did he put a fake name on it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, well, it had a bunch of other people's information, but, like, why did he think he'd need that? I don't know. Maybe for people to be like, hey, are you Joel Greenberg? And he'd be like, no, I'm Sam Smith. No, I'm from Puerto Rico. Because when they arrested him, they found that he not only had a fake American driver's license, but also a fake Puerto Rican license in his wallet. Interesting. So that's why he was uh, looking through those discarded licenses, by the way, is because I supposedly he'd also do that to like find young women in the area. Gross. Yeah. Ah, and he had their addresses. Correct. He could look up anyone's address in the system, which he was not supposed to do, obviously. But he did on multiple occasions. He's yucky. Uh, so that's um, pretty bad. But once again, the word of late great Billy Mays. But wait, there is more. He was also stealing a bunch of money from the tax collector's office uh, for another reason, to invest in cryptocurrency. Great. The tax collector's office is allowed to invest excess funds into approved investments to make money for the office while they have liquidity. So under this guise, Greenberg funneled $300,000 of taxpayer funds out of the tax collector's office and into cryptocurrency that he withdrew into personal wallets and had no intention of ever, if they even profited, of ever giving the profit back to the tax collector's office. After the first 100000 that he took, the chief financial officer of the tax collector's office told Joel that they had hit some liquidity issues and that he would actually need to return the short-term investment of the money to the tax collector's office. Of course, Joel did not want to sell all of his cryptocurrency, so instead he went to one of his rich dentist family members and begged them for money, which they gave him uh, to the tune of $90,000 oh so he could pay back the office. What's worse... 
is the same thing happened after the next $200,000 and the family member gave him the money. But this time, instead of giving it back to the tax collector's office, like he did with the first hundred thousand, he used it to buy an additional $200,000 worth of cryptocurrency and then went back to the family member and was like, Hey, remember how you just gave me almost $300,000? Can you give me 200 more thousand dollars? Are you kidding me? And they did it. Are they dumb? They haven't made the information public about who gave him the money. Well, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want anyone to know I did that either. But yeah. That's insane. They did. Casually loaning even a family member half a million dollars is like, what did he say at that meeting? I would, I would casually loan someone that's like a family member who is in dire desperate need a thousand dollars. But like, I think I've, I think I've given friends like 1500 before I gave a friend 1200 one time when they had like issues and I was like, okay, I spot you. Yeah. I, I one time gave a friend 1200. She, she paid me back, but yeah. This same friend I think I loaned in money to before, and they did not pay me back. But it was a, a different time in their life, so I was like, I believe you will pay me back this time. Did I, they? Yes. Good. They did. Uh, but definitely not half a million dollars. Even if I had that money, I'd be like, go fuck yourself. That's no, bad. that's too much money. Whatever you're doing, go... F- and I guess he... He told him the truth. He was like, I accidentally mixed up my funds and the tax collector's funds, and I need money to make it look right. Accidentally. Yeah. Uh, He also siphoned money out of the tax collector's office by spending it on ridiculous contracts that seemed as if he was trying to turn his ragtag security office into an even more well-suited militia. Out of the $1 million in contracts he doled out, he spent just under $400,000 on body armor, weapons, and ammunition. And he even purchased sprinklers that were able to be aimed at people outside of his office. Um, I guess in case like a crowd of protesters showed up. I don't know. He just seems like hell, maybe you shouldn't have had sex with underage women. This is before people knew about that. But he knew about it. I guess. Yeah. He was like, this is going to come out and people are going to like try to kill me for it, which fair. So he put in like anti like what an anti riot weapons. Yeah. On the Seminole County tax collector's office. This is once again, half a million people live there. 3.7 million people live in the greater Chicago area. Yeah. It's like a fourth of it. This is, and this is a whole County. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. No. Sorry to any of our listeners in Seminole County, Florida, but uh, you elected the guy. So what are we going to do? Um, at this point, the feds, we're already investigating him uh, for multiple suspicious financial transactions that he'd been committing with the tax collector accounts. And the constituents of Seminole County also had gotten word of how the tax collector they elected was orders of magnitude more corrupt than Ray Valdez was previously. So after three years in office, when re-election was on the table, Joel Greenberg was not running unopposed. A small teacher at a small town school in the county, Brian Butte decides to run against Joel on the same platform that Greenberg ran on three years prior, deposing a tyrant in the small government. Less than a week after Butte filed the paperwork to run in the race, his school received a letter anonymously written and signed from a concerned student that alleged Butte had been having sexual relations with an underage male student who had come out of the closet to him. Copies of this letter were delivered to seven different teachers on the same day, and an investigation was opened into the teacher. But they quick, but quickly they found that the allegations were completely false, so they turned to who sent the letter instead. wonder who did that. I don't know. It's, it's, That's in, the, crazy. it's in the episode, right? On the envelopes, they found DNA from the person who licked and sealed them shut. And this DNA, surprise, surprise, linked back to Joel Greenberg, who sent the letters as part of a smear campaign to discredit his opponent. This is for the Office of Tax Collector. Yep. He's like, 
he's like developed a scheme to make his opponent look like a pedophile, which uh, he is Himself the one who was actually a pedophile. Yeah, who was actually sleeping with underage women. So you know, whatever. Uh, that's only part of the smear campaign, by the way. He also created uh, multiple face fake like fake Facebook accounts claiming to be students from the school who backed the claims in the letter to like support it. Um, and he also created a fake Twitter account where he pretended to be Brian Butte, uh, where he made multiple racist tweets uh, to paint Butte as a white supremacist. Oh my God. Like even in the bio, it was like, it was like um, keeping Seminole County white and segregated. And then it said like white power. And then he like tweeted multiple racist things pretending to be his opponent. Oh my God. Who is just like a history teacher or some shit at like a middle school. Poor Brian. Uh, this led Greenberg to be arrested for the first time in June of 2020 under stalking charges related to him harassing Brian Butte. Joel resigned the next day and suddenly found himself in hot water financially. He was hurting for money but the pandemic, which was in full swing at this time, was delaying court proceedings. And that might also hold the secret to some cold, hard cash for Joel. See, he still had all those defunct businesses related to his advertising company. Remember how I said those would be important? Mm -hmm. Well, they're back and they're important. Well, as most of us remember, during the pandemic, they were giving out loans to affected businesses as part of the Paycheck Protection Program. So Joel pulled all of these dead businesses out of their graves and brought them back to life to bilk the government out of hundreds of thousands of dollars in a sort of corporate necromancy. He lied and claimed they had profits the year before, which they were losing out on, and even went as far as to bribe an official in the government office to approve the applications. The bribe, by the way, was only $3,000. What? Yeah, which is a small price to pay seeing as Joel got $432,200 from the program. Wow. And after receiving his first loan for $132,900, Greenberg even bragged about it to one of his friends over text, which government officials were looking at regularly, by the way, since he was under an active investigation. So they could see his text. And in the text, he asked, how soon can I blow it all on pussy? I hope this time it was at least of age. $132,000. You better buy some really good pussy for that. Or or quantity. One or the other. Uh, Joel's wife also, by the way, uh, no surprise here, left him. Good. During the whole ordeal. Good. And went to stay with her mother a two-hour drive away. And Joel broke the terms of his house arrest to drive out there to try and find her. And his mother-in-law called the police because he just, like, entered her house. Good. Without permission. Good. I'm glad she called the cops. And was downstairs. Uh, the cops showed up to find him just, like, drinking coffee on the back porch and escorted him off the premises. Uh, a, few, a few days later, in February of 2021, he was indicted again. This time with heavier charges. Those related to the sex trafficking of a minor, identity fraud, wire fraud, money laundering, and conspiracy which was related to his uh, defrauding of the COVID relief, as well as the original charge for stalking. So they just updated the original indictment to hit him with a lot more. When the police showed up to his house, he ended up having a two-hour standoff with them before they actually secured his arrest. And at one point, the police were like calling him on the phone and he threatened that his lawn was filled with IEDs. IUDs? Yeah, they were just Filled with those little... Like fun, a bunch of Moderna. Those little tea poses. Not Moderna, plastic. what's it? Morena. Bunch of Morena just everywhere. Yes. No, improvised explosive devices. Oh. Not intrauterine devices. I get them confused. They could be the same, though, if you put a small man-made bomb inside of a vagina. Damn. And it blocked the fallopian tubes. <laughs> Technically, it is in I... U E D in improv oh an I I U E D an improvised intrauterine Inter -uterine explosive, explosive device. device exactly, but not this time. Uh, this man was just sick in the head in so many ways. But 
They did finally arrest him. No word if there were actually IEDs in his I highly right doubt it. Um, and Joel almost immediately flipped state evidence <laughs> and entered a plea deal and in return was going to give investigators information into all of the other people that were involved in the schemes that he was running. The information started a years-long probe into Congressman Matt Gates, but the Department of Justice eventually decided not to pursue the charges. That being said, Gates is still the subject of an ethics investigation by Congress, as well as the topic of many other scandals, which you can feel free to look up whenever you want. But I do remember when this came out, and it was like Matt Gates is like under yeah, I remember that in in connection with a human trafficking case. Well, this was the case. This was it. Now you know. Uh, Joel did get multiple others charged and convicted in relation to his crimes, but he himself got the lightest sentence allowable for his charges of 11 years in prison and now claims that most of his off-the-wall behavior was due to him not being properly medicated for bipolar disorder. And even if that's true, he didn't just, like, yell at his family or say crazy shit. He trafficked a minor and tried to create a militia. I don't think... There are any good excuses for that. I mean, you can use that as an excuse all day, but like, I'm sorry, you're dangerous, so you need to go to jail. Yeah, it's like, you still did it, though. Yeah. Like, I get there's probably, there there can be any amount of reasons, but you still did it, though. So, mm-hmm. ugh. Joel Greenberg is, to my knowledge, one of the worst elected officials of all time. And the bar for that honor is incredibly hard to reach. So you did it, Joel. Not only did he engage in sexual misconduct with a minor, steal government funds, and steal government funds for personal gain, create a militia-like organization at the tax collector's office, but he did it recklessly in the daylight for everyone to see. He was open about everything and now can deny nothing. This is a scary time for elections. Mm-hmm. If people can do whatever they want and still somehow win votes, we're not going to be doing so hot in the future. And that is why it is so important for me to get on my soapbox right now and tell you that you all, if you can, you need to go vote. Mm-hmm. And not only in the big elections like the presidential race, but in your local governments too. This is a cautionary tale that if you don't care some asshole is going to get into office and fuck around and find out. Yep. And it's going to do nothing but hurt you. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's the story of Joel Greenberg, the the craziest tax collector in history. Let's just say that. Yeah, we'll put it that way. The craziest tax collector in American history. Yeah. There's probably I mean, crazier I, I tax think collectors. Um... Others. But yeah. So thank you guys so much for listening uh, to this week's episode. Um even though I got a bloody nose halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> but don't worry. We just, you know, we roll right along. Uh, if you... The show must go on. Exactly. Uh, you ever seen the the play that goes wrong? Yes. one of, That might be my favorite play. The guy gets the bloody mm-hmm. nose every time he goes out. Hilarious. Um, actually, that's Noises Off that that happens, which is yeah. the same concept, but made like 20 years previous. Whatever. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. If you like what you heard, uh, you can go ahead and show your support by leaving a review. You can write a review on Apple Podcasts if that's where you're listening and that's what you want to do. But if stars are your thing and you want to give us an out of five star rating, uh, give us five. Uh, uh, this is subliminal messaging, but give us five stars, you son of a bitch. You got to do it a little mean, too, or else yeah. they won't listen to you. Hey, asshole. Or else they won't listen to you. Hey, asshole. Uh, well, you can leave a star rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And on any other service you're listening on, there's some way you can support us there. You can uh, like the episode, subscribe to the podcast, something there uh, to support us in any way. Uh, that's for free. If you want to do it not for free, feel free to buy our merch. The, that is in the show description, or you can go to our website, whitecollarsredhands.com. And click the little button that says, check out our merch. And that'll take you right to it. You can also contact us through there. Submit a suggestion for a show. We did two listener-submitted episodes this season. And yours could be in the future season, in season 15. 
So feel free to go and drop us a line that way. You can also reach us on any of our socials, facebook.com slash white collars, red hands, Instagram at white collars, underscore red hands, Twitter at white collars pod. You can also check out our TikTok at white collars, red hands. Really, there's no end. Just Google white collars, red hands. You'll find it. Uh, Also free, tell a friend, you know, you have friends, right? People, people like, people like you, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, like people think you have rede- redeeming qualities, right? There's no way that everyone's just faking it when they're being nice to you and that they actually hate you, that some people actually like you, right? I don't think so. Well, tell them about White Collar's Red Hands and uh, go ahead and, and uh, either give you something to bond over or just make them hate you more when after they listen to it. If they hate the show, it's whatever. Uh, and I think that's it. Got anything to add, Nina? Nope. Great. So we'll see you next week on another episode of White Collars, Red Red Hands. Hands.